Regulation has been the biggest issue facing financial centers like London in recent years, but with rules now better defined, here's where the city stands today and how it's positioned going forward. The, the industry has suffered from a sort of regulatory headwind that has been flying into and no one's been really quite clear exactly how are we going to see a whole bunch of CEFs? Are their activities actually just going to get futurized away by the existing exchanges? So I think slowly but surely now those mists are starting to clear a bit and people are able to make some bets on how they think things are going to work, which means that they're then able to invest in the right kind of businesses and technology. We know there's a bit of a debate about its participation in the European Union and that will come up after the next election probably quite vividly. So it's important that London retains that access into the European as part of its position. It's also important that it can kind of come to terms with how does it access US markets, US providers, US customers, and the same if you look at other parts of the world, if you look particularly at the sort of Asia Pacific, how does it do that? We're heavily dependent on how the debate about access rights goes between the European Union and other jurisdictions. The idea that it leaves the European Union economically is suspect, I think, because part of the strength of London is its ability. You can't be an international centre and not be able to access a large part of the global market. It's trying to work out where the political outcome sets itself, and importantly that means the bigger picture decisions around financial transaction tax, the treatment of high-frequency trading, and, as we're seeing, the actual outcome of EMEA and MIFID. We have a fairly good idea of where it's going to end up. There's still some changes going through on MIFID II um, that we're watching very carefully. And MIA is probably a little bit more set in stone now. And certainly, say, and Dodd-Frank affects so many firms because of their activity in the US anyway. So we're certainly getting towards the finish line. We certainly spend time in Brussels now listening to, listening to what's happening there and potentially lobbying on the last couple of clauses. Politically, I think one of the things we have learned, both in Washington and more so in Europe, is that we cannot be certain that politicians are going to be relied upon to make good policy for what most of us in the financial markets believe is in the best interests of capital raisers, investors, and risk managers. In fact, what is very helpful is that we've seen some of the national politicians introduce things like financial transaction tax in Italy, where we now have a case study to see what the results are of imposition on taxes on cash equities, which we already had in the UK under stamp duty, but also now seen its impact on the derivatives market as well. Before the crisis, the role of a market was to meet the needs of its end users, and it was the job of the regulators to do the workaround, to accommodate that differentiation, that commercial differentiation, and come up with rules that would make markets safe and clean and all the rest of it. After the crisis, we've seen a fundamental change. It's the regulators who are now shaping the marketplace. And it's the end users who are having to do the workaround. So they have less execution choice. They will have less products available to them. So in other words, I think the fundamental question is, have we got this the wrong way around? Shouldn't we really be looking at market servicing the needs of end users and the regulators doing the workaround? And we may pay a price for that.